Hi, and welcome to our fifth video in the Get Started with Pi series. I'm Kate. And I'm Jenny. So far, we've done a ton in our series. Remember, if you're following along at home, you should pick up one of our Raspberry Pi starter kits so your experience will match what you see in these videos. In video one, we unboxed the Pi and connected it to peripherals. In video two, we explored the different tools and applications that come pre-installed on the Pi. In video three, we connected the Pi to the internet. In video four, we set up our first Pi project. And in this video, we're going to take Pi to the next level by exploring some of the resources, projects, and accessories for your Pi. The first thing we're going to connect to the Pi is the external USB hub. As you know, our Raspberry Pi Model B only has two USB ports. If you add an external USB hub like this one, you can have up to eight different USB devices connected to your Pi in addition to the hub. The most important thing to note is your USB hub has to be powered. There isn't enough power present in the Pi for it to be able to run a hub and the devices connected to it. Many USB devices will work with the Pi without the need for any special downloads or installs. The Pi accessory that has received the most attention is probably the Pi camera, produced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It comes in this white box. We're going to open it. And inside the box is this Pi camera module inside this electrostatic bag. That's because the Pi camera can be damaged by, by static electricity, so be sure to discharge yourself by touching something grounded, like a water tap, before you unpack the camera. Now, this end of the camera module has the lens on a little board. Be sure you peel off the protective film on the lens as it's part of the install. This flex cable is attached to the back of that board. It's more delicate than a ribbon cable, so just don't bend or kink it. The other end of the flex cable connects to the Raspberry Pi. In our last episode, we took our Pi out of its case so we could explore using the GPIO pins. To connect the camera module, you'll need to take the Pi out of its case again. And as you can see, our Pi is already out of the case, but we do have to shut it down before we connect anything. I'm moving over to the bottom right-hand corner with the mouse. I'm going to click the shutdown button here. I'm going to let the Pi power down. When the Pi is powered down, the best bet is to unplug the power cable so we can be able to boot it back up later. The Pi has a camera connector. It's actually that little black item between the USB ports and the HDMI port. If you press it with your finger and thumb on either side of the black connector and gently pull up, you'll open it. It doesn't come completely off, it just opens up. Next, line up the flex cable and slide it into the connector with the contacts, the silver side, pointed away from the USB ports or Ethernet port. You might need to hold it down against the Ethernet port with one finger while you close the connector around it. Now, just make sure that the flex is in evenly and seated snugly. All right. So that looks good, and now it's time to boot up the Pi. As we mentioned in video three, it's always a good idea to run an update and upgrade whenever you're working on a new project or attaching a new accessory. So, open your LX terminal and type in sudo space apt dash get space update. And once that completes, type in sudo space apt dash get space upgrade. So after you're updated and upgraded, you type in sudo space raspy dash config and then you press enter. You'll see that option five is enable camera. So using your keyboard arrow keys, scroll down to that and then press enter. You'll be asked if you want to enable support for Raspberry Pi camera. Tab to enable and then press enter. Then select finish and press enter again. Then you'll be asked to reboot, select yes and press enter. When the Pi is done rebooting, you should be ready to try out the camera. The camera can be used to capture still images and video. Still images are saved as a JPEG format and videos are captured using the H.264 format. So in order to take a video or picture, you'll need to open Alex Terminal. Okay, and first we'll try taking a picture. Enter raspy still space dash O space image dot jpeg raspy still is the command for taking still pictures we enter dash o because we want to set the output file and we named the output file image dot jpeg 
If you don't enter that part of the command, your pie won't save the picture. All right, we'll take, take the pie camera and let's okay. point it ourselves here. Yeah, all right. All right. I'll press enter and say cheese. Cheese! When the prompt returns, that means your picture has been taken and saved to the pie. Let's open up File Manager and see our photo. Since we ran the command in the pie directory, that's where we should find our image file. Double click on image.jpg and open it. What we're seeing is the image in its normal size, which is, which is, very, which is very large. So what we're gonna wanna do is zoom out a little bit. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can go up to view, scale, and click zoom out. You have to do that a bunch of times or you can just use the shortcut control minus. Oh, you're in it! <laughs> yeah. The image resolution is rather large. There are a variety of ways you can adjust the capture settings in your camera. For a full list in LX Terminal, type raspy still space dash dash help. We have some suggested command strings described below to help you understand how to capture images at different sizes and resolutions. All right, so now we're ready to take a video. The command for video is raspvid, and it has a variety of settings that can be applied as well. Like raspy still, you'll need to enter dash o and a file name in order for your capture to be saved. So let's enter raspyvid space dash o space video dot h264 and then press enter. Oh, okay, I don't know where you're filming there. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, returning to the file manager, we'll see our video file there in the Pi directory. Since we can see all of our files are there, let's try to play one of the videos. Open up LX Terminal. If you remember from video three in the series, we introduced OMX Player. That's what we'll be using to play this H264 file by typing OMX Player space video dot H264. Or if you're connected to an HDMI monitor, type OMX Player space dash O space HDMI space video dot H264. If you want to see all the options that are available for video capture, type raspyvid space dash dash help. It displays a very long block of text, so if you want to go back and see what is actually in the list, just click the uh, arrows on the side and you can just scroll up and see all of the options that are available. Okay, camera module, check. What other accessories do we have? All right, so we'll take a look at this one. It's a pie face control and display module. It lets you use your pie in a limited way without the need of a monitor, keyboard, or a mouse. First, let's power down the pie. We already did that, so we're just gonna snap to it. First, I'm going to disconnect the camera module. This is the pie face control and display module, so what it looks like outside of the box. We are gonna line this socket up with the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Check all four sides before you gently slide the two pieces together. Now, once the two pieces are joined, power on the Pi and open up Alex Terminal. Then we'll install the control and display software by typing sudo space apt dash get space install space python3 dash pyface cad. Test everything as installed by running the sysinfo.py program.
Details about your Raspberry Pi's temperature, memory, and IP address should appear on the LCD screen. There are videos on the Element 14 community that show how the Pi face control and display can be used to display the weather. And more advanced projects that show you how to use this with your remote control so the Pi can become a standalone media player. Speaking of projects, there are hundreds of projects for people of all skill levels on the Element 14 community. Go to the Raspberry Pi space at element14.com slash raspberry pi and you'll see a link to all the Pi projects. Hey look! There's a guy posting projects named Cape. I didn't think that was a very common name. Hmm. Yeah, those are my Pi projects. <laughs> um, in addition to the Element 14 community, there are a couple of other useful sites with projects for beginners. Check out learn.adafruit.com. There you'll find their Get Started link to tutorials and projects produced by Simon Monk and Lady Ada. Simon Monk is also a member of the Element 14 community. Of course, the mother site for all things Raspberry Pi is the site managed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which can be found at raspberrypi.org. There's a get started guide there that may also assist in getting you up and running. Remember, the Element 14 community is there to help you every step of the way. After you register, you can post questions and participate in discussions about the Pi, troubleshooting any problems you may encounter or to get more information about projects and accessories. There are new accessories coming out all the time, experts weighing in, and new exciting projects and discussions popping up every week. You can even watch Element 14 celebrity and master modder Ben Heck do in-depth builds with the Pi at element14.com slash tbhs. We hope you've had fun getting started with your Pi as you follow along with us in this video series. We're both looking forward to seeing you in the Element 14 community and hearing all your Pi-related stories, questions, and experiences. It's been great hanging out. I'm Jenny, signing off. And I'm Kim, saying goodbye. Have, Have fun, fun with, with your, your pie. pie. There's a link to start a discussion on this page, and every page in the Get Started with Pie section of element14.com. We have over 200,000 members, including lots of Raspberry Pi experts who will be able to help you out.